Hello everyone and let me welcome you to this week's episode of the Ratliff Mandolins of Production Diary and I'm going to uh, share with you what I plan to be this week's work schedule so to speak. Um, as many of you know I'm working on a batch of 10 mandolins. Some of them are already done and I'll discuss those in a few minutes but I've got uh, three, two or three that need to be built for this batch and here I have piles of things that will make those mandolins. Um, up till now, uh, I'll have three tops that are pretty much ready to have the tone bars glued in. And I have a set of, or I actually have five sets of sides with the blocks put in. The sides are bent, all of the blocks are glued in, and most of them have the corner protectors glued on already and they are ready to fit down into the mold and have the spreader bars put into place and run through the leveling sander to just level everything up and clean it up and make sure that we got a good uh, flat surface and once I have done that then we will install the Perfect. That's the bent lining that goes inside a mandolin here. Give me an illustration in just a little bit, I think. So that we have a gluing surface to glue the top onto. And that is the work that needs to be done there. These things need to be level sanded, put back in the molds and level sanded and cleaned up. These need to have tone bars. These need to have the kerfing put on them. And that's going to be pretty much the thrust of this week's work. That's that the main goal is to get three tops on three of those sets of sides. Now, once you've glued stuff up, you can't really do much to it for the rest of the day. So you better have other jobs lined up. And I've got plenty of other jobs lined up, of course, in the mandolins that are already built for this batch. All they really need is to have the tone bars put in, uh, or I'm sorry, the truss rod put in, and the tr uh, fingerboard extender and the fingerboard glued on, and they're completely assembled. So I've got six or seven mandolins right there that need that work done. I have this pile of tops. Did I say tops? Backs some uh, tiger maple, curly maple, plus uh, a bird's eye maple, which is going to have to be done before, uh, for one of these mandolins here it has to be, a, it's a bird, bird's eye maple mandolin. And then I have all the big pile of necks from last week that are profiled out. And uh, the truss rod slot has been cut. Truss rod access pocket has been drilled and the peg head ears have been glued on, but this doesn't look like this. So all of these necks here can have the uh, tuner holes drilled and the profile cut out. So all that has to be done as well. So I have plenty, plenty, plenty of work to do, but the main thrust is going to be getting three bodies ready for their necks glued together and ready for the next. So as always, I am just going to turn the camera on and if I see anything that uh, seems to be interesting enough to share with you, I'll film it. So follow me as I start my work week.
These are the uh, bird's eye maple sides for the R5 master model. So there, as you can see, I've got uh, kerfing in four of those sets of, si of five sides. Four of them has uh, kerfing in them, and I'll finish the other fifth one tomorrow. And uh, the, like I said earlier, the main thrust of the work this week is going to be putting these tops on those sides. And so to do that, I have, here's how I've decided to distribute these tops. This one is going to be the R5 master model. This one is going to be the, uh, uh, the R4 uh, oval hole one. And I've decided to pull one of those mandolins out of the batch uh, one of those extra mandolins out of the batch and make instead of uh, another A style, we'll make a, another uh, R4 uh, country boy. So I'll have two. One is a backup, and if this one doesn't have any issues and it gets uh, completed, this one will as well, and I'll have a an extra R4 uh, country boy. So that's what we're going to do an R5 master model and two R4 country boys in this batch and those will be the old holes. Now, I need to put the uh, tone bars in this one, and I'll fit the tone bars in the R4, the old holes. However, my normal procedure is to wait until uh, these are, uh, the tops are glued on and the, and the round hole has been cut before I place the, uh, and actually glue that, that crossbar in. So I usually glue this one before I put the top on, the, the R5s, and uh, the, these I'll, I will go ahead and fit, but I don't glue those in until I know exactly where the, the sound holder is going to go. So that's what I'm going to do next. Um, cut the uh, tone bars for this one and fit the tone bars and glue them in, and cut the tone bars for these, fit them, but not glue them in. And there it is, the top to the R5 Master model. It has the tone bars glued in. Well, you know, earlier I said that I always glued the uh, cross brace in an oval hole after I put the sides on. And after I said that and was fitting these bars, 
I thought, well, why do you always do it that way? And the only answer I could come up with was, because that's the way I've always done it. Well, I think I'll try something different this time. I'm, I will do the other one the old way. And this way, I'll glue this uh, tone bar in here now, and we'll just see what happens. And now I have three tops with the braces glued in that I want to have glued in. Everything just needs to be cleaned up and sanded and made. Uh, we'll make sure that it's exactly the what I want. The uh, sides are in basically the same condition. The curfin's been glued in and it just needs to be cleaned up. And so hopefully by this afternoon, we will have all of that done and we will glue tops on sets of sides. I now have the R5 mandolin. Everything is all cleaned up here, cleaned up here. We're ready to spread glue and clamp this top on this set of sides. And I'm just going to let the camera roll and here we go.
There I have it, that job is finished, and now instead of a collection of parts, I have a mandolin. It doesn't have a back, it doesn't have a neck, but I have a mandolin. Now all three of those F styles have the tops glued on. Nothing more I can do to them this day. So I'm going to come over here to mandolin six and seven, and they're two A styles. They do not have necks in them. And I'm going to go to that pile of necks and cut out a couple of A-style pig heads off of those necks and see if I can't get them installed in these two mandolins. Now, having said that I'm going to work on two A-model necks, I realize once I get over here and look at the, this pile of necks that there's a lot of stuff to be done before I can actually get that far. They have to be sanded off the, and, and slicked up and made sure that everything's level on this peg head face. They have to be tapered. I usually put the little jig on there and mark them and saw the taper into the neck. And then and only then can I kind of decide, okay, we need to drill holes and then saw out the peg head shape. So rather than specifically working on just two A-style necks, I'd say the rest of the day will be spent sanding and tapering. Just with my, I might as well just do the whole pile once I've got the saws set up and everything. So uh, maybe we'll get around to doing those A-style necks tomorrow or whenever, but uh, I'm just gonna work on the neck pile. And that is exactly what I done yesterday. I worked on the necks until quitting time. I got all of the uh, peg head faces cleaned off and smoothed down, checked the length of the available fretboard surface and sanded the back down on the thickness sander until we were at the proper thickness so that the uh, tuning machines will stick through the correct amount. And so that's where we're at with that entire pile of necks, but it's a new day now. So I can go back and on those mandolins that I glued the tops on, I can take them out of the moles and start working on them, trimming up the sides and um, uh, putting in the sound holes and starting the binding job, cutting the scrolls out and, and all that sort of thing. So I have a, choice of how I want to spend my day. And so I think I'm going to pile these necks back up and stack them nice and neat and start in on the mandolins that had the tops glued on yesterday. Here are the three mandolins that I glued the tops on yesterday. We have a, an oval hole with no tone bar in it, an oval hole with a bar in it, and the R5 Master model that has the tone bar glued in it as well. So the jobs uh, for the rest of the day on these three mandolins will be to trim off the excess top that's overhanging the sides, then we'll cut and carve the scrolls, put the sound holes in, either the F holes or the oval holes, uh, clean all those up and try to get them sanded out. And you know what, that's for three mandolins, I'd say that'll be a pretty full day. But if we get any farther than that, then we'll take them over to the binding stations and try to start the binding jobs.
Well, the wheat is flying by, but I have made some really good progress. I have an armload of things here. I've got this R5 Master model that you just saw me carving the rough carving the scroll out on. I've got these two oval holes. And so I think that's kind of where I'm going to spend the rest of the week is concentrating on the things that need to be done with to these mandolins before we can put the neck in them and that would be binding this one and getting the binding started on another one. I actually have enough uh, of the jigs to set them in and wrap binding to do two tops at a time. So that's what I'm going to do probably for the rest of the week. Work on binding channels. Well, it is Friday afternoon, about quitting time, and um, I've plotted along all week, and I've got the first piece of inner binding wrapped on the R5 Master model. And the two oval holes, I have cut the scroll out and carved the flutes in the scroll on those. Here is a little bit of footage of me doing that job. And a more or less before and after picture, after it's been carved, and then after it's been cleaned up a little bit. Still a bit wavy, but good enough that we can move on with the binding job. And so I am going to close this video off for now. Thank you so very much for staying with me till the very end and come back each and every week for the next episode. I'll post them on Saturday, so usually around six o'clock. So we'll look for you next week and see you then.